Hello YouTube, today we're going to break down one of Sam Bush's great octave licks on mandolin. Stick around. Welcome back to the channel, guys. If you didn't subscribe yet, I want to invite you to do that. You can give me a thumbs up on the videos. And if you're interested in Skype sessions, you know you can reach out to me. There, you'll find an email in the description of every video as well as tip jar information if you'd like to support the channel that way. It'd be greatly appreciated. I want to do a shout out to the Freight and Salvage for hooking me up with this hoodie that I'm wearing today. It's hoodie weather here in South Carolina. We're kind of closing in on Thanksgiving of 2022 is actually the time that I'm making this video. So, Sam Bush octaves. This is something we've all watched him play. You can find videos here on YouTube from Merlefest, the early years when they were still just kind of standing on a flatbed trailer, one in particular with John Cowan playing electric bass, and then you have Sam and Tony, Mark O'Connor, um, Jerry Douglas, you know, the, the crew, Bela Fleck, and I was fortunate enough to be on like the third row when they were playing that show, and I was also fortunate enough to see um, New Grass Revival a lot um, through those years as I was a teenager and certainly influenced by Sam's playing and the energy and just the spirit that he carries himself with. So let's uh, check out this uh, classic solo of Sam's on the tune Can't Stop Now. Wow, what a powerhouse player. Just an unbelievable level of creativity. And that's, um, this solo that he just played isn't as easy to pull off as he just made it look. But it doesn't mean that we can't, um, I really don't think you're going to find many jam sessions where somebody wants to, you know, try, you can't really copy New Grass Revival. There are too many elements of that band that no one can really approach, you know, beyond Sam's mandolin playing. I mean, John's vocal, you know, nobody can really sing like that to, to pull off copying those tunes. But this is a lick that we could use. Uh, the, the octave part, the front of this solo, is really a blues scale. I know you guys don't want to hear that word scale, but what he's playing there... I'm going to take some off of the tempo... leading all the way into a four chord to an E, all the way up here. And the, the delivery of that... Something along those lines. So we're probably not going to be able to play that exact lick in any musical situation, but I want to break it down, and hopefully this will help. If you are familiar with the channel, I have a video from way back. It's probably kind of buried on the channel at this point, but I think it's important content, and it's the closed position blue scale. I'm going to run through that really quick. If you were thinking about a B chop chord here in this neighborhood of the fretboard with your ring finger covering this B note at the ninth fret of the, of the D string, here we have the shape of the arpeggio, so to color around those notes. There we have a textbook blues scale. So I'm playing a B note, 
on the ninth fret of the D string, then the fifth fret of the A string, which is a minor third. Then we have these chromatic notes, seventh, eighth, and ninth fret on the A string, then followed by a flat seven and A note, fifth fret of the E string, and then another B note, seventh fret, E string. That's a movable shape you could take anywhere on the fretboard. Okay, if we look to first position, this D and A note, we're gonna have those open here, D and A. So I can play that exact scale an octave lower, and this is what Sam is doing. If I started here on the fourth fret, there's my B note. Then I have the minor third, now the chromatic notes, second, third, and fourth fret, then open A, and then a closed B note there. So these two things, he's playing both of those scales at the same time. wanted to take it out of the the exact phrase that he played we could just rehearse it that way so let's break that down this shape when you play those octaves it's quite a stretch we actually have four frets between our fingers so I'm on the second fret of the A string and the seventh fret of the E string then I actually have an open note when I go to the A, I'm playing an open A string, and then the fifth fret of the E string. Then we have to shift up to get to these chromatic notes that are about to happen. But now they're gonna be octaves. So once again, here I have an F sharp, fourth fret of the D string, and then F sharp. Ninth fret of the A string, and those are the chromatic notes. So you're gonna get, you're gonna need to practice, you know, to keep the spacing between your fingers accurate. Now an open note again, D string open, and fifth fret of the A string, there's that octave, and then down to B, fourth fret. G string, ninth fret, D string. So now we've kind of turned that into a scale played in octaves instead of copying the exact lick that Sam played. So you could use those lines. If you're playing something in B and it's a nice jam tune, kind of move in and out of licks that were based on that octave scale for B because B is such a great jam chord anyway. So hopefully this helps if you guys weren't familiar with the New Grass Revival body of material from back then. You should really check it out. Some of these, I mean, we think of Sam's playing. One of the first things that comes to mind with octaves is it's definitely the improvisational stuff that we've all watched him do. But these solos that he um, that he played really close to the same way every time, like Can't Stop Now is, is a great example, or Reach with those triplets that you knew he was going to play. You knew this octave lick was coming and you just couldn't wait for it. There's an anticipation in that. That's kind of where this was. It's, the idea is born from the solo that he played, but it can be a great scale kind of lick that we can use to come up with our own phrases and borrow those ideas that Sam had. 